All right, everybody. Um, so for today's lesson, new lesson for today, we're talking about equations and mental math. Um, I guess we talked about this the other day in our lesson, but I do want to point it out again, is that uh, the difference between what an expression and an equation is. Because what we've been doing so far uh, in, this lot, in this unit in Chapter 1, so far we've been dealing with this right here, expressions. Okay? And what an expression was, remember, is when there was not an equal sign. So if you were just doing something like, um, you know, x plus 5 would be an expression, um, or, you know, any, any type of thing, as long as it doesn't have an equal sign. We could do 2x minus 3. We could even have some type of order of operation here. Um, you know, 3 times, in parentheses, 5 plus 2 to the second power. Those are all expressions because... Um, there isn't an equal sign, there isn't an answer. That's what we've been doing so far. And for us to be able to solve that, like if we were looking at the x plus 5 here, they would have to tell us what the x is. If they said x plus 5, and then they told us that x was 3, we plug 3 and we do 3 in place of x, do 3 plus 5, and then we would be able to solve it and get 8. Okay, that's what we've been doing. So we're going to switch gears a little bit today, and we're going to be do dealing with equations. Okay? And remember, equations is when you throw an equal sign in here. So if I do something like x plus 3 equals 10. Okay, as soon as we have that equal sign and the answer of 10 in there, uh, now we're talking about equations. And what we're going to do today now is um, they don't have to tell us what x is anymore. Okay, not like an expression where they told us and then we solved it. Now they're not going to tell us what x is. That's our job to actually figure out what it is. Okay. Uh, so x plus 3 equals 10, and really what we're going to be asking ourselves is this. When you see an x, we know it's a number. We have to figure out what number is it. Okay, and that's really the way we would read this. We'd say what number plus 3 equals 10, and then we'd be able to figure out, well, of course, x has to equal 7. So in the equation, there's going to be one exact answer. We're just trying to figure out what that answer is. All right, since 7 plus 3 equals 10, that tells me that x has to be 7. Okay. Cool part about today, everybody, is, um, is that when they say that, we, that we're going to use mental math, um, right here, mental math, that's kind of like, an, you know, it's, they're giving you the right to not show your work. They're saying, go ahead and do it in your head. Most of these should be pretty easy. Uh, there's not a lot. There really isn't work to show. Okay. So when they say, anytime they say mental math this year, it just says do it in your head. So that's awesome. No work to show today. Okay. Example 1. Tell whether the value of the variable is a solution of n plus 5 equals 14. So this is the first type of question that they're going to uh, throw at us and see if we can do it. Um, here's the equation that we're dealing with. n plus 5 equals 14. And then they're really just asking us, we need to figure out one, what n is here. Okay, and in A and B, they're simply telling us, they're giving us possibilities of what it could actually be. In part A here, they're saying that n might equal, they're saying it equals 9. And we basically have to say, is that true or is that not true? And then the same thing over here for, for part B, where they're trying to tell us that n equals 7. And again, it says, tell whether the value of the variable is a solution. They're saying, is it an answer? Um, so that's what we're going to find out. So when they give me here n plus 5 equals 14, and then they're trying to tell us that n equals 9, well, we're going to check that out. We're going to put 9 in place of n and actually do 9 plus 5, and we're going to see if it equals 14. And in this case here, yes, absolutely, 9 plus 5 does equal 14. So that's what they're asking us to do. Tell whether the value of the variable is a solution. Well, this value of the variable equal to 9, we're saying yes, it is a solution. So that's what we're writing down here is yes. It is a solution, all right? We figured it out by plugging that value in and seeing if it worked, okay? I think we can kind of tell here then for the second one when we do B, okay, that N equals 7. Again, we're going to test this out. Uh, our equation here is N plus 5 equals 14 again. But now they're asking us, is 7 an answer? So we're going to plug 7 in. 7 plus 5, and they're saying, does that equal 14? Um, and hopefully we know that actually 7 plus 5 equals 12. And since 12 d isn't the same as 14, it's supposed to equal 14. It doesn't. So we're saying no. Part B, this one's not an answer. Okay, so we figured out that for part A here, n equals 9. Yes, that was an answer to our equation. 
And for part, part B, n equals 7, we figured out that no, that wasn't an answer to an equation. So, again, that's what they're asking us to do is simply they're giving us possibilities of what n's going to be. And we're simply saying, yes, it works, or no, it doesn't work. That's what we're trying to figure out. Okay, next example, and our last example here, you can say there's an A, B, C, and D. Uh, I'll do the first one. I'll do part A, and then I'll let you pause it and do B, C, and D. Uh, but example two here, now this is where they're telling us use mental math to solve it. Okay, anytime they're asking us to solve an equation, they're asking us to figure out what's the variable. Okay, so just like I said back on the... Uh, in, on the introduction page, what we're really trying to say to ourselves here is if we read this equation, we're saying 9 plus what number? And we're trying to figure out what that number possibly has to be. 9 plus what number is going to equal 12? And I'm guessing all of us can do that in our head. And we're um, going to say here that, well, 9 plus 3 equals 12. So what we just figured out here is that x has to be 3 because 9 plus 3 equals 12. And I'm just going to go back and erase a couple things here. Here we go. Yeah, we're trying to figure out, yeah, 9 plus 3 equals 12, and that's why we figure out that x has to be 3, because that's the, the number that makes it work. Uh, I do want to give you one pointer here, because on some of these, and you'll see on B, C, and D, I think especially on letter D here that gets a little tricky, uh, here's a little trick that works. You probably heard about this before. But when I see this problem here, 9 plus x, um, a lot of times what we do is, since I know that's a plus, um, a good trick here is to work backwards. Instead of saying 9 plus what number equals 12, if we can't actually figure that out, and I know we can on this one, but a trick here is, is to start with our answer, the 12 here, and work backwards. Okay? So instead of doing this adding here, what we can do is work backwards and actually do 12 minus 9, and again, we figure out that our answer has to be 3. So that's a good little trick. Since it's 9 plus x, we're actually going to do the opposite of adding. We're going to subtract uh, and get that answer. Okay, uh, B, C, and D, you guys do that on your own. Um, so uh, pause the video, then come back and see the answers. Go ahead and pause it. Make sure you do B, C, and D on your own in your notes. Then come back and see if it works. Okay, we're back, everybody. So, letter B here. The equation is n minus 5 equals 12. Again, uh, the trick that I showed you for part A here is this. Since that is a subtraction, it's saying n minus 5, one of the tricks here is to start with the, the answer over here, the 12, and work backwards. Instead of minusing 5, the opposite of minusing 5, minusing five is going to be to add 5. So if I take 12 and add 5 to it, that's, when I get, that's what's going to give me 17, which means n has to equal 17. All right? And if you want to check and make sure that works, we can do that really easy. Uh, if we take that 17 here, we're saying that n has to be 17. Well, let's plug it back in. That means n is 17. So we're claiming that 17 minus 5 equals 12. And, yeah, absolutely it does. So hopefully you got uh, 17 for an answer there for uh, letter, letter B. Okay, uh, on to C. Now remember, when we see the 4t here, that means 4 times t. 4 times t equals 20. So again, we're saying 4 times what number equals 20? You can probably figure out that 4 times 5 equals 20. So 5 is going to be the answer. Again, if you want to use the trick that we showed before, uh, since this is a multiplication, the opposite of multiplication is to divide. So if we start with the 20 and work backwards, again, instead of multiplying, we divide. We can do 20 divided by 4. And again, that's going to equal the same answer we got before, which is 5. So that's a good trick there. Uh, letter D. This is the one that I thought was a little bit tough because I think uh, what a lot of people want to do here is when they see the 3 and the 12, a lot of people want to do 12 divided by 3, and they try to say the answer is 4. And in fact... That doesn't work at all, because if you plug 4 in place of n, m, 4 divided by 3 is not 12 at all. So uh, I'm guessing some of you did that, but that's why we're learning the lesson. We're going to show you the right way to do it. So I'm going to get rid of this work here. Okay. What I see here is this division. 
the opposite of division is to multiply. Okay, and I'm going to work backwards. So I'm going to start with the 12. Instead of dividing by 3, I'm going to take that 12 and I'm going to multiply by 3, which tells me that M has to be 36. So that one's a little more tricky. Uh, something like A, something like B and C, uh, those are pretty easy to do in your head. Um, so by all means do that. But when you get the letter D, um, don't move too fast. Then you got to put a little thought into it. Uh, try that trick of working backwards when they're tough problems and make sure that you get it right. So uh, that's our lesson for today. Uh, all right.